Hey, I'm Kyle, and together we're going to make beautiful websites. Welcome back and hello new devs. Today we're going to be learning about CSS transitions and CSS animations to keep making those websites beautiful. But first, thank you to Hover.com for sponsoring this episode. Get 10% off your own custom domain or email and support the show by going to Hover.com forward slash RoboSquidTV. And with that, let's get started. Let's talk about how to get your website moving with CSS. We have two kinds of animation. We have CSS transitions and CSS animations. Transitions let us animate properties between two states, like animating the background color or the margin on a hover state. But you can't loop the animation or have any additional steps. You're just changing from one CSS property to another. You could also trigger this by adding a class in JavaScript, anything that will change the value. CSS animations let us go beyond the simple transitions and create complex animations, and we can control those animations with JavaScript. CSS animations use keyframes to change properties over time and can be looped, and are just better for certain tasks. We're going to go over CSS animations, but I think we're going to need a part two. Let's go back to CSS transitions. First, let's talk about what you can animate. Mozilla's MDN has a list of all of the CSS properties that you can animate, and I'll have a link in the description. Though most of the properties you can animate are mostly obvious, you can animate most things that you can imagine being animated. For instance, you can't animate from one font to another. There's just no way to animate between those two. You're replacing a font file. However, if you wanted to animate the font size or the letter spacing, that would work just fine. One thing to worry about with animations though is if you aren't smart about how you animate, you might get low FPS or lag. Animations that affect the layout of the page cause performance issues. Animating a font size would be an example of an expensive task. The most performant animations come from a property you are probably not familiar with. It's called Transform. Transform lets us manipulate elements visually without taxing the browser too much. Mostly you'll deal with Translate, which allows you to move an element, Scale, which is pretty self-explanatory, and Rotate, which you can specify the amount of degrees you want to rotate around the origin point which can also be changed, but it's centered by default. We do have some other fun ones like skew X and skew Y, which take a degree value, and we can even do 3D transforms. I wanna get into that, but I think 3D transforms might warrant their own video. Let's take a look at some real examples of CSS transitions. Vidfire.tv is one of my websites, but what we are interested in are two simple effects, no JavaScript involved. When you hover over the avatars on the page, they scale up and the button moves up and drop shadow fades and grows. Let's remake this. First, we have our element that we want to grow when we hover over it. I'm just gonna make a small box from a div and give it a background image and give it a 200 width and height so we can see it. On the hover selector, we are going to make the box grow by 200%. We'll add our transform property and give it a value of scale two. That will make the box appear two times larger and you could even specify an X and a Y scaling. If you hover over the box now, you'll see an instant transition instead of an animated one. So now we'll give our box the transition property, which will tell it which property to watch that should be animated when the property value is changed. We could put in transform as our value as that is what we are changing, but we could also use the keyword all to animate all affected properties. There are two other arguments we could add. First of all, we can add how long our animation can last from start to finish. That's just added on as a whole or fractions of a second. And the other popular argument you may use is the transition timing function. This one can get a little confusing. The timing function is a bit of math that says how fast the animation plays over its duration. If the duration of your animation is pretty short or it doesn't change much, this is going to be a little hard to see. I was going to make you guys an example, but I found this really cool website and it just does a really good job. Of course, the link is in the description. Cubicbezier.com. These five examples are the most common keywords you might use for your timing function. First of all, let's just see what I mean. If you click the link in the description, you'll be looking at the same page as me, with ease being the timing function we are comparing against. Ease is the default timing function. What you can see is the animation ramps up to full speed and then starts to slow down as it comes to a stop. Compare that to the linear motion and you can actually see what ease is doing. Both boxes move the same distance and start and finish at the same time. You can click through these to see the difference between them. Now you might have noticed that on the left side, we have this curved line that represents our timing function. Those keywords are actually just shortcuts to this. 
A cubic bezier is a mathematical function that defines a curve. So not only can you use the keywords, you could drag these handles and generate your own curve as well. This allows us to do some interesting things. Look what happens if I take the end of the curve and make it so that the line extends outside the bounds and then re-enters. The block shoots over its target and snaps back. So remember, you can substitute in a curve function instead of a keyword. In fact, if you plan to use a curve more than once, I would highly suggest making it into a native CSS variable, which you can learn about in our last video. Now, if you are really lazy, there are some CSS frameworks out there that'll handle animation for you, and you can just tack the classes on with some JavaScript. So you might need to use a little extra JavaScript than you need, but the tools are out there. One of the most common being animate.css, which really just does what we just talked about above. You could actually look at their source and learn from their animations and just remake them yourself if there's just one you like. Whatever website you add your CSS animations to, you're going to want to share that website with the world. Get 10% off your own custom domain name by going to hover.com forward slash robosquidtv. You can see the CSS animations I used on vidfire.tv, one of my domains I got from Hover. Hover has hundreds of domain extensions to choose from, so you don't have to get a .com. You could get a unique domain name for your web design portfolio with a .io extension or any of the other hundreds of extensions. You could also create an email forward like me at myportfolio.io to give your portfolio a resume that professional touch. And it all comes with free Whois protection to keep the spammers at bay. Support the channel and get 10% off your next domain by going to hover.com forward slash RoboSquidTV. All right, guys, I have a ton of great links in the description for you guys with all the sources that can help you out. Subscribe to catch part two, where we're going to be going over true CSS animation. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.